And it's 150 or more to see To be a Pokemon Master is my destiny How's everybody doing? PJ here, doing something I've been wanting to do for an incredibly long time now, even well before I had my YouTube channel going. It is time to rank the Golden Boy, the original 151 Pokemon from Kanto. Oh man, I can just stare at this. Oh, this is the music I'm using, by the way. Shout out to Poke and Chill. I can just stare at these images forever. It just brings me so much joy, so much nostalgia. Pokemon was my life when I was a little kid. I beat the original games multiple times. Red, blue, yellow. Oh, man. I think red version is the one I beat the most because it was the first version I properly owned. Anyway. <laughs> Good times, man. Good times. Let's get started, shall we? First things first. Boom. Boom. If anyone briefly saw my previous Subnautica video that I had to take down due to graphical problems, it's currently re-uploading as we speak. Gengar is my all-time favorite Pokemon. I want to say nothing comes close, but something does come a little close, though. Still, Gengar is good and far away. Just my number one will always be my number one. I absolutely love Gengar. If I could have it my way, I'd have a giant Gengar plush life-size. Just keep that in my room. Ugh. Gengar, gar, gar, gar. Ah, that was kind of bad. I can do a better one later. Anyway, moving on. Uh, Bulbasaur is gonna... Oh, so... Best, great, good... Meh, bad, terrible. Bulbasaur is even going B tier. He's just... I mean, he's a cute little... Cabbage frog thing. Oh, I'm gonna zoom in so we can get better image qualities. Uh, just one more. Yeah, that's perfect. Bulbasaur, the original anime, was actually a bit of a jerk. He was like this cold, tough guy demeanor. He and Squirtle would get into it with each other, but they were still pals in the end. It's funny because me and my cousins, the two cousins I consider my brothers, one of them's a few years older than me, the other one's only a couple of months older than me. It was perfectly divided between us because the eldest always picked Squirtle, the middle always picked Bulbasaur, and now I always pick Charmander. Things just worked out perfectly. Now, er, I'll put Bulbasaur in A tier. Bulbasaur's great. Ivysaur, on the other hand, is going into the meh tier. Ivysaur, like, by far, in the original Kanto starters is that awkward transition phase where it's like, I don't know, it's like, yeah, it's still Bulbasaur and it's not yet quite Venusaur, but at the same time, it's like, it simultaneously feels like they did too much and then too little to distinguish it, you know, if that makes any sense. Ugh. Venusaur, on the other hand, A tier. Venusaur. Just a giant pissed off frog with a tree growing out of its back. Oh, excuse me, I'm a bit gassy with the burping. And then in Pokemon Stadium, whenever Venusaur used an attack or got hit with an attack, like his eyes just got full of bloodshot veins. Make it look like it was stoned out of its mind or something. <laughs> Charmander, S tier. Best starter of all time. I mean, he's just an adorable little fire lizard. He's the cutest, yet savage looking thing there is. God, I fucking love Charmander. Charmeleon, S tier. Charizard, S tier. Charizard will be reigning at the top of S tier. Charizard is my second favorite Pokemon of all time. Charizard is just like straight up one of those peak design Pokemon along with Gengar. Gengar is just like this little purple imp demon thing that's chubby and round with a big old smile. And then Charizard's just like this perfect dragon, even though for some reason he's not a dragon, which they eventually fix with one of his mega evolutions. 
I mean, Charmer's... Oh, man. If you had a holographic Charizard when you were a kid, you were, like, officially, like, the coolest kid in school. You were the talk of the fucking town if you had a first edition. Well, we didn't know much about first editions back then when we were kids. If you had a hollow Charizard back then, god damn. My older, my old, my oldest cousin, he had a holographic Blastoise. The other guy had a holographic Venusaur, and I never owned a Charizard. Period. That that always upset me. Charizard was hard to get, man. Still, second favorite Pokemon of all time. I love Charizard. Squirtle also S tier. He's just this adorable little Squirtle or Squirtle. He's an adorable little turtle dude that's mixed with a squirrel. <laughs> Squirtle, Squirtle. Squirtle, 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 squirtle. Yeah! Squirtle, squirtle, squirtle. Shout out if anybody gets that reference. Um, I will eventually be uploading me voicing all the Pokemon. Well, the ones I know, I should say. So I'll be doing that sometime in the future. He's just so adorable and he's a little chubby. And then the Squirtle in the anime is just like this little... He has this shit-eating grin. He's so arrogant and cocky, but he's playful and adorable. I love Squirtle. War Turtle, not so much. He's gonna go and beat you because he's nowhere near as bad as Ivysaur. But he's got a big old fluffy tail and big old fluffy ears. And if I recall, lore-wise, War Turtles use either their ears or their tails to like sense things around them when they're swimming. Anyway, Blastoise, S tier. He's a giant turtle with a giant shell that has motherfucking cannons coming out of it. And those cannons can blast water hard enough to rip holes through steel. Blastoise is effing awesome. Just big ass juggernaut of a dude. Caterpie is gonna go in B tier. I mean, it's your this like the very first bug Pokemon. It's just an adorable little Caterpie thing. Caterpie, Caterpie. I keep mistaking the real names of animals for the Pokemon. <laughs> this little adorable little caterpillar thing that scares the crap out of Misty. Metapod I'm going to put in B tier just for the memes. <laughs> like Ash versus the Bug Catcher. It was just Metapod versus Metapod using Harden against each other. <laughs> Butterfree is also going to go in B tier. Um, I would say Butterfree is the most iconic of the bunch. Cute little butterfly. We'll get into the design later because you can't help but wonder if at one point Pokemon was going to do something and then they went a different route. We'll cover that. Hold on, I'm going to drink of water. But as a member of Ash's original core unit, gotta love Butterfree. Weedle, I never really cared about. Kakuna, even less. Beedrill, on the other hand, is A tier. It's just a massive pissed off bee with two giant spikes for its arm and then another spike for its stinger. Like, and bee drills are massive lore-wise. If you see one of those things, fucking run, man. Pidgey, going in A tier. Cute little bird. Pidgeotto, also going in A tier, but above... Above bee drill, that's for sure. Pidgeot is... My third favorite Pokemon of all time. Pidgeot to me was has the distinction of being my first ever main in a Pokemon game. And it got to a point where like my Pidgeot was like level 92 plus. And then the rest of my team were in like their 40s. I just Pidgeot will always hold a plus a uh, special place in my heart for that. I know I said he's my third favorite Pokemon, he's my third favorite Kanto Pokemon. Because someone else is my third favorite overall. We'll get to that into the once we do the Johto list. Funny enough, back in the day, Pidgeot was called Pidget. Like in the original Poke Rap, it was called Pidget. And as a kid, I preferred Pidget and always said Pidget. Now that I'm older, Pidgeot just sounds better and Pidget sounds kind of weird. But hey, then's the breaks. Rattata, um, giving it A tier just from meme status. I mean... Like, Youngster Joey. Do I need to say anything more? Raticate, on the other hand, is bad. I don't like Raticate. I never liked Raticate. It's just a big, 
fat rat. And like it had the exclusives of the fangs back in the day, which did a crap load of damage. Then there's the whole you kill Gary's Raticate, and that's why he's in the Pokemon Tower Morning. Because you fight his Raticate on the SSN, the next time you see him, he's in Pokemon Tower, and you never see his Raticate ever again. So that's kind of dark. Sparrow's gonna go in D tier. I just never cared about this little shit. Pharaoh, on the other hand, I never cared about it, but I can respect its design. Like, just, it's got that mohawk, which is badass as hell, even though I guess it kind of looks like a rooster. But it's got that massive beak that just impales you with it. Like, using Drill Peck on a, uh, with a Fero just feels like, ha, eat this beak, and ksha, savage. I'm gonna put it over Metapod. Ekans, just gonna go in B for now. I mean, it's a simple design. It's a snake. The reason it's ranked so up high is because it was Jesse's main Pokemon, and Jesse was my first ever anime crush. Arbok, on the other hand, it... high S or high A or low S. Here, I'm gonna put Arbok in S tier. Just look at that hood design. It's just a freaking giant cobra that can swallow you whole, and has this demonic pattern on its hood. That is hella cool. Jabaka. Okay. Pikachu is going in S tier. I will say, Kanto Ice Pikachu is my fourth favorite Pokemon of all time. He was my favorite when I was growing up as a little kid. I just absolutely adored Pikachu. He meant everything to me. To the point where my cousins and their friends were playing Smash. And one of them yelled out, Pikachu's dead. Because I assume he just KO'd Pikachu, whoever was playing it. And I heard that, and I started crying because I thought that meant, like, Pikachu was dead for real. How, like, maybe the anime killed him or something. I was devastated. Raichu, nowhere near as good as Pikachu, but it's something. I'll put it in B tier. Um, only the top ten are going to be organized in order. After that, you can just take it as you will. I will say the Pokemon Vacation mini story where Pikachu and Raichu got into a race while holding their cheeks together. That was pretty cute. And pretty funny at the same time. Sandshrew, I can respect what it is. It's a little desert rodent thingy that's covered in armor and he rolls into a little ball. Sand Slash, on the other hand, is S tier. It's Sandshrew. It's everything an evolution of Sandshrew needed to be. And I wonder what a third evolution would look like. Ugh, excuse me. Ugh. I mean, it's got two scythes for claws on each hand. And his back is covered in these massive spikes. I remember in Pokemon Snap, um, knocking down Geodudes on the, I think it was the valley level, that's what it was called. Knocking down Geodudes would pop up a sand shoe, and then knocking down all the gravel would pop up a sand slash. Sand slash! Sand slash! Nidorini female, C tier, whatever. Nidorina, C tier, whatever. Nidor Queen is in my top 10. Nido Queen was probably my second most powerful Pokemon behind Pidgeot. She destroyed Agatha back in the day because this was before Pokemon abilities was a thing. So unfortunately, the Ghost Trio, they didn't have Levitate, which meant they're part Ghost. So Nido Queen, I would just Earthquake everything in Agatha's lineup and just one-shot all of them. Nido Queen was a monster on my team. Nidorin male, same. I don't really care too much about it. Nidorino can go in B tier. Nidorino is pretty cool. Definitely way better than Nidorina. Nido King is also going in S tier because Nido King was also a core part of my team. But I'd made the most. I was a little kid, so I didn't know anything about evolution and stats and whatnot. I just wanted a big bass Nido Queen as early as possible because I thought it'd be strong as hell. So my Nido Queen, I evolved properly. I didn't evolve her to like level thirty something. My Nidoking, King, I evolved at like level 19, and I quickly came to regret that he was so weak. But he did once land two horn drills in a row against my cousin, and that was the funniest shit ever. So Nidoking's Queen's earning that S ranking despite the fact that I messed him up leveling him. Clefairy's gonna go in A tier. Clefairy! Fairy! 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 Ah, oh, my throat. Fairy! Da -da 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 -da. Then you got out the little rubber hammer. Bucky! Bucky! 
Ah, oh, fuck Clefairy says. That can turn into a nightmare near the end of it. Fun fact! Clefairy was originally debated to be the mascot of Pokemon, so instead of Pikachu, we would have gotten, like, Pokemon Pink version. And then there's the anime clip of, um... Clefairy... Whatchamacallit... And that little UFO, that was adorable. <laughs> Just, like, trying to pilot the thing. He's like, what am I doing inside of this? How do I control this thing? And it knew how at the same time. It was great. Clefable... Nowhere near as good as Clefairy. Never cared about Clefable. And then there's the whole, it's the counterpart of Gengar theory or whatever. Ah, I never cared about that. Vulpix is cute, but I also don't care about it. Ninetales, on the other hand, is outstanding. Just a fantastic design. I mean, it's a tall-ass blonde fox who can get on fire and then... I believe the lore was if you pull out one of its tails, it'll curse you for all eternity or something. That's metal. Jigglypuff, S tier, another super iconic, even more, way more, infinitely more iconic than Clefairy. Jiggly. And seeing it put everybody to sleep and get pissed off and then graffiti all over their faces. <laughs> uh, Jigglypuff was great. Wigglytuff, same deal as Clefable. It's just like second fiddle. I don't care about... I will say I like Wigglytuff more than Clefable though, so it'll go over that. Zubat. I originally thought there weren't going to be any F tiers because, I mean, it's the, it's the original 151. They're good. Zubat's going to hell. Fuck Zubat. You all know why. It has nothing to do with its design. It is purely from a gameplay standpoint. No thank you to Zubat. Golbat. I also don't care. Oddish. Oddish, Oddish. I mean, it's cute. That's all it has going for it. Gloom is kind of cool. It's cute that it always has drool oozing out of it. And then, like, when you KO it in uh, Pokemon Stadium, like, its eyes get all hella big and whatnot. It's pretty funny. Vile Plume, my cousin really liked when we were growing up. I remember in Pokemon Snap how you had to play the Ploke Flute to get Vile Plume to start dancing. That was pretty funny. Paris is a cute little shrimp crab thingy. Parasect is bad. Not just because this design is gross, it's a giant parasitic mushroom, it's also a zombie. Like, it is dark as hell. Like, it's literally the corpse being reanimated and controlled by the fungal, by the parasitic mushroom. That's horrible. That's a Last of Us. Parasect was Last of Us before Last of Us was ever a thing. Venonat. Cute little purple furball. Venomoth can go in... D. I don't care about Venomoth either. It's not bad, I'll put it in C. Meh. My earlier point with Butterfree... Look at these two! You mean to tell me Venomoth was not meant to evolve into Butterfree? It's like, at the last second, Nintendo changed their minds. And then Weedle... I mean, uh... Caterpie is clearly supposed to evolve into Venomoth. So they messed up with that. Diglett. Diglett, dig, diglett, dig. Trio, trio, trio. Going in S tier. An icon of Pokemon. Just a cute little mold thing, and nobody knows what it looks like underground. Trio, trio, trio. Doug Drio can go in B. This was the point where, like, Pokemon evolutions just started being more. It's like, how do we make Diglett evolve? Give it two more Diglets. My god, that's genius. For some reason, in the anime. Doug Trio's voice was trio, trio, trio. But then in Pokemon Stab, it was like, Doug. I don't know what the hell that was about. Like, you get, you take enough pictures of Diglett and it turns into Doug Trio start coming out. It's like, Doug. But still, I mean, it's cool. It was also hella fast. Meowth is going in S tier purely by the anime. We went from voice to voiced. He's just like this wise guy demeanor, and he's uh, the brains behind Team Rocket. And he actually comes up with good plans. It's just Team Rockets are a bunch of morons, but they're lovable morons. And then he hates Giovanni's Persian, and he's always fantasizing about the gang. Like, 
being held in favor by Giovanni. <laughs> you gotta love Meowth. Persian is going in C tier solely because of Meowth hating Giovanni's Persian. Psyduck? Psy? Psy? Yay! Psyduck's going S tier. I love Psyduck. Poor little dude and his headaches. He's just a chubby little duck with psychic powers. So lovable. And then in the episode where they're taking the group picture and Psyduck sets a timer. And he's going to run over to join the group picture and then trips and falls and it takes a picture of him falling down. <laughs> oh, I love Psyduck. Golduck is cool, but otherwise doesn't mean anything to me. So he can go in B tier. The red jewel in his forehead is kind of cool. Mankey. <laughs> Mankey's going in S tier. Primate. Primate is going near the top of A tier. Mankey, man. You little thief! Give me back money, huh? You can get another hat, Ash. Urgh, it's not the hat. It's the principal. I want to send in a million postcards to get that hat. Well, it's no wonder I didn't win it. I only sent in one. I feel bad for that Mankey. It was like... The first friend... As far as we can tell, the only friendly Mankey we've ever seen... And just immediately gets shit kicked in by James and gets so mad it evolves into Primate. <laughs> School Primate finally got a final evolution. I think it's called the Nile Ape. And the lore behind it is Primate got so mad he died. Which is. That fits. That actually happens in Pokemon lore. It's been known to get so angry that it dies. And its face looks peaceful as a result. So yeah, Annihilate was just a primate that got so mad it died, and then this rage materialized on Earth and is back as a pissed off spirit. That's metal as all hell. Arcanine, never really cared about He's a little fire puppy. There's a better fire puppy that we'll cover in Johto. Wink, wink. Arcanine as well. Just don't care. Poli! <clears throat> no, it's got a little shaky bit at the end of the thing. Poli! My throat's not feeling it right now. Apologies. Poliwax cute. You can go in A tier. The whole Poly family is going in A tier, actually. Holy world. Polyrath. Like, a, it's a very simply designed evolution line, but it, it fits. There's a cutie little tadpole. Still a tadpole, but bigger. And now has fists. And then a pissed off tadpole with fighting fists. <laughs> Abra. F tier. You all know why. There's a meme of Eminem's Lose Yourself and it's like a shiny Abra and it's like, you only get one shot. <laughs> to all the times Abras have bailed, you gotta go in F tier. Kadabra. I don't really know what the Alakazam line is supposed to be. Like, are they psychic foxes? Is that what it's supposed to be? Um, Kadabra can go in B tier. It's pretty iconic, especially with this fight against Pikachu with Sabrina. Alakazam, I personally don't like, but because of the absolute terror it was in Gen 1, it has to go in A tier. It was the most broken Pokemon of all time back then. Alakazam was so broken in Gen 1 that I'm pretty sure part of the reason they introduced the Dark type was to just knock it down a few pegs. Alakazam was out of control back then. Machop, B tier. Cute little, I don't know, vaguely dinosaur looking dude with muscles. But Choke, on the other hand, is my favorite of the bunch. He's going in S tier. My Choke. Just a big buff dino dude. Ugh, excuse me. Ugh. Man, I'm getting a lot of burps today. And then he's got a championship belt, which, like, helps control his power, and that's really cool. But Champ, I never used. I never used any... When I was a little kid, I never used any of the trade evolutions. Because even though I knew so many people that played Pokemon, I just... I never owned a Link Cable, even though they all did. I just never got around to trading any of them, so I didn't have a Gengar or a Champ. None of that until, like, already well into my teenage years. But Champ was a core part of my G8 team, though. And speaking of G8, I never played any Pokemon games apart from G1, 2, their respective remakes, uh, all the games that take place in that series, and a little bit of Pokemon Coliseum. I actually got 
I got near to the end of Pokemon Coliseum, actually. I never finished it, though. Um, but then I didn't play 3, 4, 5, 6, or 7. So when I went into G8 with Sword, it was my first time playing a, a brand new Pokemon game in basically my whole life. And I wasn't sure how I'd like how I'd respond to it, but I ended up loving it so much. I mean, it was like I was back into the Pokemon world. I was so happy. And Machamp was definitely part of my team going through that game. Bell Sprout, you can go in C tier. You're you're not bad actually. You can go in B tier. Bell, Bell, Bell. Weeping Bell can go into B tier. Victory Bell can go into A tier purely because it kept eating James every time he called it out. And it's because it loved him. That's why James was one of the best Pokemon trainers of all time. He treated, even though he was a dick, because he was part of Team Rocket, he always treated his Pokemon with love and care. And they all loved him for it. James was awesome. So Victory Bell can go in A by product of James. Tentacool, you're the Zubat of the sea. You can go to hell. Zubat's worse though. Zubat's going bottom of F. Zubat's the worst of the bunch. Tentacool is cool. Especially when there was a kaiju sized one just laying waste to that city and Ash like trying to send his team against it. It's like these little foot tall Pokemon. Pokemon. <laughs> Pokemon. Um, just setting up against Godzilla sites. Kendra Cruel. <laughs> Geodude. Geodude can go in B tier. Geodude was a terror for me. If you didn't know, Gen 1 had a difficulty system and it was dependent on the starter you picked. Bulbasaur was easy mode, because he just washed the first four gyms without any effort. He was super effective against Brock, Misty, resistant to Lieutenant Surge, and then was either neutral or super effective against um, Erica. Squirtle was normal, and then Charmander was hard, and I always picked Charmander, so yeah, I had a hard time in the early stages of those games. Graveler sucks. Like, I can get what they're trying to do, like, make a Geodude bigger and better, but Graveler probably could have did something better with that. Golem. Golem can go in B tier. I don't think he's as iconic as Geodude. There was that one episode where, like, Ash had Charmander torch Golem so bad that the trainer recalled him, and, like, he was so hot from all the fire that the Pokeball was boiling hot, too. That was funny. Ponyta can go in B tier, just a cute little fire pony. Rapidash is S tier. Just a huge flaming unicorn. That is so cool. And this is begging to have the final evolution be a Pegasus. That'll be so cool. Hopefully it happens one day. Slowpoke, slow. Slowpoke's going in S tier, just for the lols. You gotta love Slowpoke. The dopey Pokemon. It takes up to five seconds for it to process the fact that it's even in pain. <laughs> in the anime, Slowpoke had two voices. The original was the one I just did when it was just like a background character for one episode. It was just hanging out at a beach. Then at the very end, it evolved. It's like, Slowpoke, slow. Ah, slow bro. And then the other one is like, Slowpoke. Slow bro. Slowbro, not as iconic as Slowpoke, but I'll put it up there. A tier for Slowbro. Um, the... Shelter. I wonder if... It'll ever be explained if the Shelter is, like, its own separate Pokemon. Or if they just form one together to make Slowbro. Hold on. This is my favorite song of the bunch. Let's just enjoy it for a second there. There's a beautiful Easter egg in this song, too. Just ho uh -oh, flying across the sky for this song. Oh, man. Perfection. God, Jocho means... Jocho means as much to me as um, Kanto does. Anyway, carrying on. Man, that song makes me emotional. Magnemite can go and... C tier. I mean, it's just a little magnet, dude. Magneton! Same as Doug Trio, but I think Magneton is better just because it's like visually better. Even though it literally is just three magnetite. Three. Uh, what's this guy called again? Magnetite, right? 
Magna my my bad. Magnetite is the Orin Subnautica. My bad. Magnemite. It's just three Magnemite magnetized together, but for some reason it works. Just because like Yeah. It's it's, it's a magnet Pokemon. No wonder they're just stuck together. Unlike Doug Trail, which is just three dudes. Farfetch, fetch, fetch, fetch. Can go into beach here. I believe it's called the leak. Was he what he has? I was gonna make a mistake and call it a Lidl. That's a soup thing, like a soup ladle or something. No, it's a leak. It's a kind of onion or something. And he just whacks people with it. And he finally got an evolution. I, I don't I don't know if it was in Sword and Shield. It might have been Sword and Shield. But Farfetch is cool. Doduo silly. He can go in B tier. Dodrio I actually like. The three heads are constantly arguing with each other. Much like Pharaoh, they got these giant beaks they could just impale you with. Remember Dodu and Pokemon Snap's like, hey, 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 hey. Seal. Don't really care about Seal. Dugong, long, long. Don't really care about Dugong either. Grimer. Grimer can go in B tier. He's just a little puddle of sludge. And then Muck, Muck, Muck. Muck is going in S tier. I love Muck. It's funny, in Pokemon Snap, you get Grimer to evolve by just bombarding it with Pester Balls. And it either gets so pissed off it evolves, or like just the irritant chemicals inside of the Pester Ball, it absorbs them and just becomes MUG. Then Ash's Mug just loves everybody. The big affectionate ball of toxic sludge. <laughs> and it always smelled bad, so whenever he transferred it, the Pokeball smelled horrible. <laughs> When I was a kid, I got a holographic muck in a set, and it was really, really cool. I was pretty proud about that. I'll never forget that day. I remember exactly where I was. Shimmer! Cute little dude. You can go in B. Cloyster. Ah. Uh, Cloyster can go into C tier. I don't really care about Cloyster one way or another. Ga, 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 sleep! S tier. Where else would it go? I love these three. God, you can never go wrong with the original Ghost Trio. Just perfect. Then the Tower of the Tower of Terror is my favorite Pokemon episode ever. How they're just like pranksters and they hang out in a basement eating chips and drinking orange soda, watching Japanese uh What's that kind of comedy? Slapstick comedy? Oh, man. Gotta love them. Is this a Song of Storms? Since I never played, like, beyond five whole Pokemon generations. Is it five? Three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, there's five whole generations I never played, so I don't know what a lot of these songs are. Onyx. Ooh. Onyx is pretty iconic because of Brock and the absolute monster it was in the original games. This guy was a pain in the ass to take down. Unless, of course, he had Squirtle or Bulbasaur, which I never did. I ain't no wuss. I actually always had this fan design in mind for what Onyx could have as a final evolution. I called it Skolix. So it'd be ground and ghost. Uh, would be so cool. Just a giant skeletal snake Pokemon. Drowsy. Never really cared about Drowsy or Hypno, and their cries I always thought were funny. I always thought it would be saying something like, Hey mama, hey mama, and then Hypno was, Hey mama, hey mama. <laughs> Krabby can go in A tier. Get up there. Kingler 2. Cookie, cookie. Purely because of the cookies. And Ash's Kingler was a boss. Then it's a. Uh, I'll. I wish this had their mega evolutions and their following evolutions, but it doesn't. So I'll have to go with that over a separate video. Kingler's uh, Gigantamax is pretty nuts. Voltorb. Voltorb and Electrode, despite their simplicity, I like them. They're funny. I like Electrode more. Just a big ball that blows up. Then the meme where it's like you get a shiny electrode encounter and it's like, you know the rules and so do I. <laughs> Executes bad. Execute, yeah, it's, 
Executor, just because of how funny it is, can go in B tier. But Execute, uh, funny enough, Executor, Alolan, 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 Aloha Executor is like the first super high level Pokemon I ever caught in Pokemon Go. It was weird. It was like CP 3000. Um, Cubone, Cubone, Bone, Bone, Cubone, Cubone, poor little Cubone. Cubone can go into A tier. Man, such a tragic lore to it, though. Still, he has a little club he just thwacks you around with. Marowak, I like more. Marowak. Like, the skull of its dead mother just merged and became its head. That's metal. If you didn't know, a Cubone evolves into a Marowak once it's come to, uh, once it's come to terms with the death of its mother. I really like Low and Marowak, though. Firing Ghost, hell yeah, Ghost is my favorite type. Monly, say, 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 I'm only S tier. Hitmonlee's awesome. His legs stretch out. His kicks are hard enough to shatter diamonds, if I recall. And then in the fighting tournament, Jesse used a Hitmonlee. She's just yelling at like, kick, 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 and it worked. Hitmon Chad is cool. I mean, he's got boxing gloves for hands. But he's kind of blander than Hitmonlee. He'll still be... A-tier, but maybe the bottom of A-tier. If I recall, he's named after... Uh, is it Bruce Lee or... J I think he's named after Bruce Lee and Hitmonchan is named after Jackie Chan, I think. I was going to say Jet Lee, but that's L-I. Let's see... Lake Chung is a cute little fat dude with a long ass tongue. He can go in B. Coffee! Coffee is going to go in H tier purely because of James, and his was always jolly and happy. Weezing! Weezing's not as cool as Coffee. Bit of a lame evolution, too. It's got like a deformed head growing out of its side. Galarian Weezing's pretty funny. Rhyhorn is just a big, pissed off rhino made out of rocks, which is just enough to keep it from being bad. Ah, screw it. He's cool. He can go in B tier. Rhydon is really cool. Rhydon can go in A tier. Pop quiz. What's the first Pokemon ever made? Is it Arceus? Is it Bulbasaur? Is it Rhydon? Or is it Mew? <laughs> Chansey! Chansey's iconic as hell. Always being the Pokemon, a Pokemon, the Pokemon Center with Nurse Joy. Being an absolute tank of a thing in Pokemon Go, with Blissey being even more ludicrous. Ah, excuse me. I never really understood what Soft Boil did as a kid. I still don't think I know what it does. I just know it heals or something. Tangela is a little ball of vines, and it has two little cute red shoes. Tangela is cool. Tangela can be in the upper echelons of B tier. Kanga, 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 Scott. Kanga, Scott can go in high B tier. Maybe A tier. Dizzy Punch was always such a cool move. And then it's Mega Evolution is just um, the little baby hopping out to fight too. <laughs> Horsey, never cared about. Seedra, never cared about. I almost said Kingdra. Goldeen, I never cared about. Goldeen, Goldeen, Goldeen. Getting a Goldeen in Smash was just embarrassing. Sea King, never cared about. Star U can go into meh. But Starmie, Starmie's a cool design, though I personally have a grudge against it. Um, my cousin Starmie swept my team. And this was when I had a 90-plus Pidgeot. Oh, now I'm sad. Time to get depressed, everybody. <sighs> anyway. And yeah, his Starmie just annihilated everything. Starmie was pretty fucking broken in Gen 1. Had crazy stats and a crazy access to so many different types of moves. It was crazy. Mr. Mime! Mr. Mime can go in A tier. Silly little Mr. Mime. Living rent free in Ash's mom's house, helping her out with chores. Keeping her company. What a good pal. Scyther, S tier. Anything that has size for arms is just S tier. <laughs> it's a giant mantis that can fly and has size for arms. 
Santa! Flash is just so cool. Jinx can go into C tier. Jinx, Jinx, Jinx. Jinx didn't look like this before. Its face used to be all black. Electabuzz can go into high B tier. Electabuzz's cry in the original was pretty ridiculous. It was like, it can actually can go higher up still. Its cry was so stupid. <laughs> um, I hope my mic can pick it up. Electabuzz's cry in the original anime was something like, um, <clears throat> just absolute gibberish. <laughs> <laughs> Magmar, just because the fact that it wiped the floor with Ash's Pokemon is not going into F tier. But the fact that its forehead is just a butt. Like, it's got a butt chin for a forehead. And then said butt is on fire. That's just such a bad design. Magby's cute, and then Magmar is just weird. Pinsir could go in B tier. Massive Rhinoceros Beetle or Hercules Beetle. I don't know. One of those two. But then it's got that fang filled open mouth that was like straight out of Silent Hill before Silent Hill was even a thing. Charles, I really like Tauros. Ah, where'd you go? Simple design yet effective. It's a big bull. And then it whips itself with its tails to piss itself off even more and it gets even stronger from that. That's cool as hell. Magikarp can go into B tier from pure meme status. Gyarados is S tier. Gyarados is like one of the Pokemon that come to mind when I started actually taking actual stats into consideration when playing the game. Gyarados is a monster. And then, um, I wish I had a shiny in Pokemon Go, but those are so hard to get. But I remember the, getting the red Gyarados and gold and silver. That was nuts because it was like your first real exposure to a shiny Pokemon. Because, I mean, they're so ludicrously rare. Like, the odds of you getting a shiny Pokemon before reaching Lake of Rage was super low. Still is super low. But, yeah, ever since... Soul Silver, Gyarados has been a part of every single one of my teams. Gyarados is just a beast. Fun fact, Wild Gyarados and Lore have the distinction of being one of the rare Pokemon that are just straight up evil. Wild Gyarados will just murder everything around them, everyone around them, just because they can, and because they're, they just hate anything that's alive. Lapras can go into S tier. I mean, it's the fairy Pokemon. Even though it wasn't until Gen 2 the surfing sprite was Lapras. I remember a friend of mine fed me the line that Lapras had a hidden final evolution or a hidden second evolution in gold and silver. And how you had to go to the one of the caves on like Tuesday at night and you'd find Lapras there or something. And then if you like evolve that, it'd be like a red Lapras and have like spikes on its shell or something. I'm confused. Is that actually how you get Lapras in GT? Was there actually a Lapras in one of those caves? So I remember one of the trainers saying, or one of the radio stations saying, oh, there's strange sounds coming from the cave at night or something. Oh, well. Ditto. Ditto. Ditto could go in beach here. It's just a cute little blob. And no matter what it transforms into, it keeps that silly face. Eevee! Ugh. I just don't like Eevee. I've never understood all the hype over it. It got to a point where there was a pretty severe oversaturation of Eevee in the Pokemon community. Vaporeon is one of my... I believe it's one of my cousin's favorite Pokemon. She was all like, oh my god, we need to get matching Vaporeon tattoos. And I'm like, the fuck we are? Jolteon, I will say, I really like. Jolteon and Umbreon are cool. If they ever made a ghost evolution, that'd be cool, but they haven't so far. But Jolteon, I always like. It's covered in spikes. It's fast. I liked electric types when I was growing up. And then it also has some sentimental value to me. Because Jolteon has the distinction of being the first Pokemon in Pokemon Go 
that I caught that was 100%. I got it off a raid near some clinic. It's pretty nuts. Flareon is not Vaporeon, so it gets points for that. I'll put Flareon somewhere in... I don't know. Around here. Or not even. Somewhere in C tier. Porygon. It's a shame American audiences never got to see the Porygon episode, but Porygon's cool. He's a digital Pokemon. But yeah, the episode got banned in anywhere outside of Japan, and I believe in Japan had to take it down because it was like causing seizures. So that sucks. Porygon's cool. Seeing him in Pokemon Snap was pretty cool. Ammonite is just a cute little squid thingy with the snail shell. Almost Star, I don't care about. Kabuto is cool. Kind of evil looking. I prefer Kabuto over Ammonite. Kabutops! Scythe Arms automatic pass to S tier. It's like an ancient Scyther. And then it can move hella fast underwater because of its sleek design. Oh, just so cool. You can never go wrong with Scythe Arms. Let's put all the Scythe Arm boys together. There we go. Scyther's definitely the winner of that bunch. And then I prefer Sandslash over Kabutops. Oi! There we go. Aerodactyl, the Pokemon that pissed Charmeleon off so much, he forced himself to evolve. <laughs> when I was a kid, I thought Aerodactyl was part of the legendary bird, so Kanto. I had no idea. I thought he was the rock legendary bird. Aerodactyl's cool. Snorlax. 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 <laughs> you, what, who doesn't love Snorlax? He's just a big bear whose belly you can jump and sleep on. Uh, I love Snorlax. Then much lax. Much, 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 much. Which we'll get to at another time. Articuno is my least favorite of the legendary birds, but Articuno is still cool. So you can go in B tier. Just a big blue icy bird made whose wings are like made of crystals. I hate Galarian Articuno. I really don't like what they did with that. Oh, man. Zapdos is my favorite of the legendary birds. Zapdos is in my top 10. Zapdos has the distinction of being the one legendary Pokemon I actively used consistently on my teens as a kid. I'm mean, just looking at the designs. The wings. Oh, the music's over. Its so wings and tails are just these giant spiky things that discharge lightning. And whenever Zapdos appears, it causes thunderstorms. That is so cool. And then it. Drill Peck with Zapdos just seems like such brutal overkill. Look at the size of its beak. Let me zoom in a bit more. Its beak is enormous. It's like Pharaoh on crack. Man, I love Zapdos. Moltres, I like better than Articuno, but nowhere near as much as Zapdos. But it can go in... Hmm, bottom of S tier or top of A tier? Because its design is so cool. It's a freaking phoenix. But it's always on fire. And then Galarian Moltres is the shit. I love Galarian Moltres. Um, I can... I'll put it near the top of A tier. It's Cry was pretty badass, too, back in the day. Dratini, I don't really care about. Dragonair is cool, so Dragonair can go in B tier. Ugh, Dragonite. I'll put it in A tier. I never cared about Dragonite until I started putting, like, actual Val Lineage Pokemon stats. Um... I've never owned a Dragonite in any of the mainline games, or used one, I should say. But I have a stud of a Dragonite in Pokemon Go. That guy's a beast. Love that. Mewtwo. Top 10. What can you say about Mewtwo? I mean, it's... When you think legendary Pokemon in, in this series, you immediately think Mewtwo. It is the most iconic legendary of all time. And then it's got that profoundly deep quote in the original movie of I see now the circumstances of one's birth are irrelevant. What matters is what you do with the gift of life. Like hearing that as a kid, that just flies over your head. But as an adult, god damn. And then it's laughing melee. It's like... <laughs> oh man, and then charging up Shadow Ball actively damaged anything that was near you. That was so fucking cool. And then I remember playing Melee in Yosemite on a family friends. They took their TV and their GameCube and I was playing that. 
And if you're playing on very easy Mewtwo's down B, if you use it twice in a row on something, the first one puts it into that confusion state. And then the second hit just instantly KOs him. It was pretty freaking funny. And then there's Mew. Bing. Little psychic kitty thing. Mew can go in A tier. I remember doing the whole Mew's under the truck near the SSN for hours trying to get it. And, well, that never worked for obvious reasons. My older cousin was the first one to ever legitimately get Mew. And I think it, I still don't understand how it works. I think you had to go to Toys R Us and they'd like put a computer chip inside of your game or something. I don't know how he got it. But he got multiple of them. And then he traded me one and it was like level, it was either level 50 or 100. And I was only like around um, Vermilion City at the time. So I didn't have enough badges and it never obeyed me. It's like Mew took a nap. Just pull the Charizard and it was a lazy dude that never did anything. <laughs> That's all of them. Uh, so the ones I'm going to be rating my top 10. Huh. Haunter, Zapdos, Nido Queen. Man, my Nido Queen was a beast. Charmeleon. I said Melian, not Mander. Melia Jar. Then Mewtwo and Charmander. Charmander Jar. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yep, perfect. Yep, I am pretty satisfied with that. Well, my fellow trainers, that's going to be it for this one. Yeah, I'm satisfied with this. Okay, Gengar forever. Until next time, everybody, this is PJ signing off. Gengar, Gengar, Gengar.